Ba 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 All right, hey guys, welcome back to the Constitutionals. I'm your host, Chad White. This is the premier C plus comedy podcast on the website C plus comedy, where there's a whole bunch of things that we make jokes about. <laughs> um, hey, sorry about the theme song. It was not as long as I intended it to be, but it was just as good. All right. What a, all right, there's not, I, I don't have anything I really want to talk about. Uh, kind of, this is a little behind the scenes, last minute. And I'm just going to make it make it work to the best of my ability. So, to, uh, this week, let's talk about me. Let's talk, as always, let's talk about what I did this past week. And I saw, you know what? Let's talk about Remix. Let's talk about Remix. I saw the new Baywatch movie. Boy, did I see that movie. Bunch of pretty, pretty young people in that movie. And I think it was a huge waste of my time. I don't feel... I I spent too much money seeing it. I saw it in the middle of the night, which was not fun. And I, I, I enjoyed the people in it. The writing was atrocious. The direction was uninspired. Uh, so let's start at the beginning. This movie, Baywatch, is a remake of the TV show, or I guess a continuation, because Pam Anderson played her character. Uh, that's not spoiling anything. She, they, they advertised the cameos in the opening credits, which was unneeded. Don't advertise the. I, that made me so mad. I saw David Hasselhoff and Pam Anderson, and I thought, "Why are you doing this? Don't waste. Don't let let me be surprised. What if I was about to say twenty two gesturing? What if uh, Tropic Thunder just advertised all the cameos in that movie? What a waste. What if uh, what if I can't think of another movie?" But oh, what if Pop Star never stopped, never stopping? Which was I'm I'm in the middle of watching for the second time. Just started, just advertised. Oh, Carrie Underwood's in here. Oh, uh, uh, Q-Tips in here. Cute <laughs> Quest Love. Oh my God, I'm so tired, guys. Uh, Quest Love's in here. Yeah, uh, 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 you know, just and I just started talking about all the other the, all the people in that movie. Oh, what a waste. Okay, so I saw so I saw this movie. And let's start at the beginning. Uh so then so it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He's playing a guy named Mitch. And he's the lieutenant of the lifeguards. If that, that I assume that's a real position. And he, he runs a team who with his second in, his second in command is being a woman named her real her real life name is Il Finish. Hadira, beautiful, gorgeous, brown skinned woman. And she plays Stephanie. And then there's uh, CJ Parker. And she's played by Kelly Rohrbach. I don't know if. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Pam Anderson. She's playing. She's playing, playing Pam Anderson's character. Whatever. I don't care. So uh, Kelly Rohrbach, beautiful, gorgeous woman, just like the last one, whose name I Hadira, who I can't pronounce. And her love interest is a guy named John Bass, just a schlubby guy. Imagine this is this would that his role would be a role that Jack Black would have played in 2001 had this movie been made then. And then there's also one more woman. Oh, Alexandra Daddario, uh, who is Zac Efron's uh, love interest, and then Zac Efron plays a douchey character named Matt Brody, who is. I don't know who that is actually. Anyway, so so Mitch Buchanan is Dwayne Rock Johnson, and he's a lieutenant. And then Zach Efron's a, a dick, and he comes in. And he's like, "Oh, I'm on a team already." And Rob Hubel, who's <laughs> who from minute one, if you don't know that Rob Hubel is working, I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin the whole freaking movie. If you don't know that Rob Hubel is working with the bad guys from the first second he is on screen as Dwayne the Rock Johnson's boss, then you're not paying attention to how movies work. And, oh, the bad guy is uh, Priyanka Chopra, who was 
sorely wasted. You, you can be beautiful and you can be funny, and she's she's proven that you can't do either one. I mean, I mean, you can't do both. Uh, she's a gorgeous, gorgeous woman who's on the show Quantico, I assume, and she's having real trouble. So, so they go. So, uh, so Praga Chopra is trying to uh, just. She's being a bad lady. She's selling drugs, trying to buy up real estate. Mitch Buchanan thinks that that she's doing this, and that and he spends the entire movie trying to <laughs> trying to prove it. And that's the end of the and that's the movie. Oh my god, it's so bad. Oh, there, the Rock and is uh, Zach Efron are great together sometimes, but Jesus, uh, last year around this time, Zach Efron had Mike and Dave New Wedding Dates and Neighbors Two, both movies I thoroughly enjoyed. He also had something else. Yeah, look it up. But I and I. <laughs> When I was watching him in this movie, and then they have they have sequences that are so you know that they're green screen. You can see the green around Z- the silhouette of Zach's body, and there's just a, <laughs> the boats are pretending to float in the middle. Oh, and Dirty Grandpa, and I hated Dirty Grandpa. Did not like that movie, but the boats are like floating. In the middle of the ocean, uh, the faux ocean, they were just slowly rocking, and you, you see Dwayne and, and uh, uh, Zach just standing there talking to each other. A lot of jokes that were just. It seems, and I want to I want to discuss this. The writers of the movie, because I want to pick on them, Damian Shannon and Mark Swift, who have a joint Wikipedia page. They're best known for their collaborative script writing projects, in particular Freddy vs. Jason, and well, there's the issue, and later 2009 remake Fr- Friday the 13th. And this is their first huge big time movie ever. And I don't know these people. And they co wrote it with Jay Sherrick and David Ron, and executive producers Thomas Lennon. And Robert Ben Grant, both of those last names, the both the last two guys, are Reno Nine One One. They produce a lot of stuff. They're very funny. Ivan Reitman produces movie as well. So you got Tom Lennon, Robert Ben Grant, and Ivan Reitman, and then you got Seth Gordon directing. Seth Gordon is uh, known for the King of Kong documentary, fantastic documentary. Also did Freakonomics documentary, great documentary. And he also did Horrible Bosses, Pixels, and Identity Thief, and Four Christmases. So he's done one, two, three, uh, four. Four movies that I really liked. Freakonomics, Four Christmases, King of Kong, and Horrible Bosses. And then we've got Identity Thief, Pixel, and Baywatch. Not a good, not a good combination there. And then we got these writers who won't, who's the biggest movie that they've done is Friday the 13th. And they are apparently in pre-production on a movie called Genies, which is a prequel to Aladdin. And it's just a movie about the G- the genie world. Anyway, they did, they did not do a good job writing this movie. There's a lot of jokes that the movie's rated R. There's a lot of F words. And that is the only reason it's rated R. I believe that they I just heard some fireworks. It's Memorial Day. I'm recording this. It's going out the next day. <laughs> it's fireworks going off. Celebrating the Great Wars. Um, thank you for your service. And there's a lot of F words. They can cut out all of the F words, F words but one. Maybe one F word where CJ kisses the fat boy. And he says, I'm the MF and tech guy. That is the only F word that needs to be in there. Otherwise, they could have made this PG-13. They make a lot more money. I don't understand why it was R-rated. Because they were cursing a lot. There's a gun battle. There's a, two gun battles. I don't know. This movie is very disjointed. It wasn't funny. There were teenagers in the screening. Just sitting there watching the movie. Oh, this is why I hate summer so much. It's a bunch of teens going to see movies when I'm seeing movies. This is why I go in the morning on Sunday. Two weeks after the movie comes out. 
still waiting to see Covenant. Alien Covenant. Uh, this movie made... This, all right, it's uh, another thing. This movie's 116 minutes long. It, I, it was 119, I believe. But by the time they got to the credits, it almost two hours had passed. It was too long. It stretched for so long. And then Rob Hubel would disappear for parts of the movie. He was only... He was basically there as a supporting actor. He was barely a bad guy. Oh, my gosh. And Alexandria, Alexandria Daddario. She was having issues very stiff with Zac Efron. And they were trying to... There was one scene where The Rock kissed his second-in-command as they were doing, I guess, recon or whatever. And Seth Gordon put in this put in a shot of what is her name? I can't pronounce it. If fell if 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 finish ill finish Hadira. Put in a shot of her looking up at the rock as if to say this is going to be a love story for the rest of the movie. Guess what it was not. It was just it was it was it was the scene exactly like if you've seen the Amazing Spider-Man number one as many times as I have, and I'm sick of that movie, Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield. There's a guy trying to steal a car, and he's Spider-Man now. Andrew Andrew Garfield Spider-Man now, and it gets in the and the guy pulls out a gun. Andrew Garfield kicks the gun away, and it goes under a car, and the camera follows it under a car, and you think the gun's gonna put come back and play? It doesn't. It does not. So why would you include that shot just to show where it goes? No, just show. We know it went off screen. We saw him kick it out of the guy's hand. And that's the same thing with this. We don't, if we see them kiss and then you show a shot of her looking at him seductively like this is going, I'm, I like him now suddenly then follow up on it because it's lazy filmmaking. Now in the vein of other TV shows, that have been made TV shows from the what 80s that have been made into movies 80s and 90s that have been made in movies uh, Get Smart I thought that was a fantastic movie I have it on Blu-ray I watched it I just watched it uh, maybe a few months ago uh, there's Charlie's Angels 21 Jump Street which is one of the best movies and then 22 Jump Street, one of the best sequels. Good Burger. Then you have then you have Dallas, which is which has had a couple of movies apparently. Dark Shadows, which I fell asleep during. The I Dream of Jeannie, 15 years later. I I love Lucy. I Spy. I'm gonna be real honest. I'm on the Wikipedia page. The Batman vs. Dracula uh, for the films based on television series. Batman vs. Dracula, The Fugitive, The Rugrats. They have had three movies. Rugrats, Rugrats Go to Paris, Rugrats Go Wild, where they meet the wild thornberries. Get Smart Again. Another Get Smart movie. (laughs) G.I. Joe. (laughs) Then uh, G.I. Joe, the other movie. Transformers. It's just crazy. I don't understand how how everything goes so wrong and then the issue is they wanted to make it so raunchy it didn't need to be raunchy you don't need to say f word you don't need to get in the tank get in the horny teen boys who want to see this movie they're gonna buy a ticket now for whatever else is out and they're gonna go see they're gonna sneak in this movie you don't see that money you make this movie pg-13 you get all these beautiful look beautiful women looked at you get daddario you get hedera you get the uh, the blonde one who whose name escapes me. She's a model. She's gorgeous though during the movie. Uh, roar back. You get all those. You get all the little boys in there. See this movie. See the ladies do their thing. As you can hear, I, I'm not very good with the ladies. And then um, Hannibal Burris. If you if you even follow him tangentially, he's been bragging about how his character dies in the movie. And it's not a good way to die. It's not a smart way. It's not funny. 
his characters in maybe three scenes. Uh, oh, there is a before I get to before I get to Hannibal verse. There is a joke about an erection about Ronnie's erection. This is prior. There's maybe thirty minutes of preamble before the three characters you guessed are going to become <laughs> lifeguards become lifeguards. There's Zac Efron. They introduce him in one scene. Uh, in the same exact scene, Alexander Daddario, she barely gets her own stuff to work with. She's barely by herself. And then you get the uh, John Bass who played Ronnie. This guy's obviously in love with uh, C.J. Parker. Obviously, they're gonna they're gonna get together by in the film. Blah blah blah. But I always say how the schlubby guy gets with the most beautiful woman on the entire movie. But uh, he gets. For, I guess C.J.'s talking to him. And then he gets an erection and then Hannibal says, you got an erection. And then he goes, okay. He decides to jump on one of those wooden lay down seats and then it gets stuck. And then she unknow- unwittingly talking to him is, uh, is making it stay up. And... Then the entire beach eventually circles around them, and they can't get it off. And then, and then it breaks. It is the such a bad joke. I can't believe that this movie made it past. I wonder. I don't know how many drafts were made in for this movie to be made. Anyway, so there's that. There's that movie. I'm done talking about it. Oh, and Hannibal Buress. Anyway, his character turns out he's working for the bad lady, Priyanka Chopra. Jeez, excuse me. Priyanka Chopra. And then uh, he says he wants to get paid, and she says, oh, you're blackmailing me? She, that's not how she sounds. And then he goes, N- no. And she goes, oh, well. She walks off. Five scenes later, you see a dead Hannibal Buress, and her goons are dumping chum down his wetsuit because he's already dead make it look like a shark attack then his body washes up another five scenes later guys this is such a stupid movie i hate it so much oh, i can't wait i'm gonna write a review on it it's not gonna be it's gonna be worse than the pitch perfect review pitch perfect 2 i don't like that movie that much except for that dance scene the i mean the battle royale scene whatever anyway <sighs> all right what am I doing? I'm watching, not going to lie. I've really gotten into The Bachelorette. And something's happening right now. Rachel Lindsay has left the, oh no, a guy left. Oh man, DeMario? He left in a van. Maybe he got kicked off. <laughs> this, is, this is the loosest episode. I also was driving home listening to Comedy Bang Bang. It had the cast of Bajillion Dollar Properties. Everybody except for Ryan Gall, who's busy doing stuff. Probably shooting that new show he got. Oh, oh man. Rachel's freaking out. <laughs> I don't know. I should See, this is why I don't record at night. This is why I record in the morning. I have things to talk about. I just talked about Baywatch for 17 minutes of this freaking podcast. Oh, I'm so mad. Arian Foster was apparently in it. David Hasselhoff, his his cameo wasn't too good. He was the mentor to Dwayne the Rock. Dwayne the Rock Johnson gets fired from the stupid lifeguard precinct so that because uh, Rob Hebel knows he's on a trail of Priyanka Chopra. Oh, there's a and so anyway, and he's working at a Sprint store, which is it's way in your face. They have this. I don't understand how people get mad at Man of Steel, which is a fantastic film for being for having two things that are in your face advertising wise. When I when first of all, I don't even know it was advertising that movie. Honestly, I'm looking at Superman and his uh, bulge and his muscles the entire time. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, and then uh, his and then the mentor is the character name for David Hasselhoff. And he pops up and he goes, oh, you got to go back. And then Mitch said, I don't want to go back. And then they have a little conversation. And that's it. Oh, my God. It's so bad. It's a waste of $10. 
I, I have not felt like I've wasted money seeing a movie. I watched The Beauty and the Beast a few weeks ago, and I enjoyed seeing that again, that same story for the thousandth time. I understand this. I've got two two pilot scripts ready to be read and to make money. I got outlines for two movies. I can't even get looked at. I'm just so jealous. All right, well, that's the end of this episode of The Constitutional. Sorry if you listen. I know there's five of you. Sorry for the rambles, but I was uh, really taken aback by this Baywatch movie. I knew it was going to be bad, but not this bad. Uh, if you want to see, if you want to read the review to the Baywatch movie that I wrote, uh, by the time this has been up for 24 hours, I hope you can go ahead and read the review on cpluscomedy.com. Uh, we get the latest news reviews, features, interviews, other good comedy bits that only I can provide you with. You can follow us on Twitter. At C plus comedy, follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook, tumble with us on Tumblr. Also, you can head to youtube.com slash C plus comedy to get this and other shows that are available, like new, News Time <laughs> on comedy, subpar tunes, so many different things. Okay, this is the end of that, and I'm going to say goodbye. Bye.